On May 8, 1996, a teenager near Fort Worth, Texas scoured the wooded areas of a golf course looking for stray balls. He noticed something unusual protruding from a dirt mound. As he approached, he realized it was the skeletal remains of a human hand. In Tarrant County, Texas, a teenager searching for stray golf balls had stumbled upon buried human remains. When investigators responded to the scene, it was clear they had unearthed a clandestine grave, one constructed to conceal a violent murder. The male victim had suffered massive trauma to the skull. Advanced decomposition made it difficult to discern any identifiable features. Technicians began scouring the dirt in and around the grave, searching for any clues to the man's identity. They recovered a metal cross necklace still draped around the victim's neck. But little else was found. Frustrated, investigators left the scene unsure who they had unearthed and why he had been murdered. With only bones to work with, medical examiners began searching for answers. In addition to the blunt force trauma to the skull, there were several nicks observed on the victim's ribs. This led the team to conclude that the male victim had been stabbed to death. Other than a red scorpion tattoo on the victim's shoulder, no identifying features remained. Okay, Examiners ahead. knew that determining when this victim died would be critically important in helping to establish his identity. Tarrant County Chief Deputy Medical Examiner Mark Kraus looked to the victim himself for clues. The deeper parts of the body were turn to adipocere, which is sort of a rancid, soap-like material that takes, in this part of the world here in that time of year, takes a minimum of about five to six weeks to begin to accumulate to the degree we were seeing it. Tarrant County Police released the few details they had on this John Doe to law enforcement agencies throughout Texas, hoping that the information would spark recognition from the public. The tactic appeared to work. Several people called in, hopeful their missing loved ones had been found. But in the end, none of the characteristics of the body okay. found at the golf course matched details of known missing persons. According to Tarrant County Detective Mike Hargis, until police could give this victim a name, making a case for murder would be difficult. It's very frustrating not to know who your victim is because it, it doesn't really give you a starting point. Uh, your starting point is usually their identity, so you can start tracing their background. Uh, we'll have to do a, a, a victimology, find out who your person is, what their risk level is, who, who they associate with, where they hang out at, things of that nature. And that can also tell you a lot about who might have been involved in their murder. And uh, so it's very frustrating not to know where to start. they turned back to forensic examiners for help. Forensic anthropologist Dr. Dana Austin was asked to create a biological profile of the victim. And though there wasn't much to work with, Dr. Austin can learn a lot about an individual by studying their skeletal structure. From the width of the brow ridge and other facial features, Dr. Austin concluded that the victim was a Caucasian male Next, she needed to determine the victim's age. In this case, in order to estimate the age, it was obvious that this person was not fully mature skeletally. There are gaps in between these bones that in an adult it would be completely fused. Dr. Austin concluded the victim was between 17 and 21 years of age. To bring this victim to life, Dr. Austin next attached tissue depth markers to 21 different points on the skull. 
These markers reflect the average thickness of skin for people of similar race, age, and sex. After the skull was photographed from various positions, a forensic artist was brought in to create the contours of the victim's face. From that, a composite sketch was developed and then forwarded to Tarrant County investigators. Police released the sketch through the media. But again, nobody was able to identify John Doe number 87.